All right, hello and welcome to video three of configuring OSPF uh, point to point. So please, when we're done, submit that at the end. So we left off where we executed the command show IP OSPF neighbor on router two, right? So what router two says, what do you, what's information? It's saying that your neighbor 172.16.100.126 full state means it's all has a priority equals zero it's already been converged um <clears throat> it's the next hop address which is this address 192.68.11. okay let me just execute that command show ip ospf neighbor and it's in dot 10. This is my exit interface and the serial 001. So this is this interface, right? And out of my serial 001. So this is showing the, the exit interface and the next hop address. The dead time interval, remember, it's 40 times the, um, the hello interval. So it starts at 40 and starts to tick down. Every time he gets a hello, it gets to be reset. So this is taken just once. If you execute the command again, so now it's five seconds away. In five seconds, he'll get another hello. It'll go back to 40 and dig down. If it went to zero, it would have, um, when it would have, you know, this is, would have been out. And we'll do that. We're going to change the hello interval and bring this down. But before I do that, let me go and type in the command show. IP OSPF um, interface serial triple zero. Let's see what we see there. All right, so you see the IP address. Good. We notice the router ID. It's a point to point, so no designated router. We don't have to worry about that. The hello interval is 10, and the that interval is 40. Perfect. So all that information you get out of here. And in the show interface, here's your, if you hit the upper arrow key, let's see the other interface. All right. <clears throat> Serial 001, it's already also point to point because it's directly connected. And it's pretty much the same thing. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do config T. Let's change the hello interval on this interface. And what happened is you, let's change it to five. So go to interface serial triple zero, and you are going to say IP OSPF space type H for hello, hit the tab key. Oops, it's spelled OSP F. And let's make it five and hit the upper arrow key. Let's do the tet interval. What's five times four? Let's make it 20 times. Now, if you just wait a few seconds, you are going to lose connection because remember the hello and the dead interval must be the same. This is the, this one has the default, which was what? Which is 10 and 40, right? So if you go and now, if you type control Z and type show, there you go, they went down, so you got detached. So if you type show neighbor is no longer a neighbor, it's gone, right? And if I type in show IP OSBF serial double O triple zero, and you see, <clears throat> this is the triple zero router ID two to two, and the hello interval and the dead interval is five, but there's no SPF, so you won't be able to ping. So unless I make this and change the hello interval to five and ten too, if I go interface and config T, and I go to the interface serial triple zero on this interface. And I type in IP OSPF, low interval of five. 
and then I type in IP OSEF. Put the letter D. Let's make this a 10. I'm sorry, not a 10, a 20 with a dead interval. And the line should come, up, come right back up. There you go. Come back up. All right. So, but this one still has the hello interval of 20. I'm sorry, the dead time interval 20. I'm sorry, the hello interval of 10 and the dead of 40. All right, so this is everything you need to know about OSPF configuration. Um, you know what? Let's go to the switch and do some LAN security. We haven't done that for a while. So go to the switch. Which one? Since we got time to do that. Type in config T. No IP domain lookup. And let's change the host name to S1. All right, good. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to do it. Let's do show VLAN. Oops, I do control Z. Show VLAN. All right, so there's my VLAN. Uh, I just want to see the process on there. Put that up a little bit. I got from 1 to 20, 23, 0, 1 to 0, 24, and the gigabit Ethernet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the 50 over the interface range, FA0 slash 1 to 24, and shut down all the interfaces. I shut. Good. And I'm going to do also do the gigabit uh, 0 slash 1 to 2. Also close the gigabit inter interfaces as well. All right. So that's important. And now I am going to open up. I'm going to go to interface range. Uh, FA0 slash 1 to 2. All right. And I'm going to say no shots. All right. Open these two guys up only. All right. Um, I know this is an end device, so let me do Mac filtering on it. So I'm going to show the interface FA0 slash 1. All right. And let me enable port security. Okay, so you type in switch port, port dash security, and look what happens. Okay, you cannot enable port security on a port that's dynamic, right? So we got to change it to access port. Switch port, mode, access. And now if you hit the upper a couple of times to get the switch port security. Now it's enabled. All right, so let's set, hit the upper arrow key and say I want a maximum of one device to go in. One MAC address will be allowed. So this way you can prevent against the MAC off utility that fills up the MAC address table with MAC addresses. Only one MAC address is allowed to come in. All right, so when this guy sends out anything, he'll learn it. The first guy who sends that information, we want him to learn. So when he lands there, what am I going to do with the MAC address? I want to make it part of the, um, so hit the upper arrow key. I want to make it part of the configuration file, make it st static, sticky. So I'm going to say MAC add, sticky, right? Enter. So now the address that comes in is going to be in the part of the uh, configuration file, and only him will be allowed to go through. Anything else will be blocked. So what would the violation be? Hit the upper arrow key a couple of times, and you're going to say, all right, if somebody else came in with a different address, I'm going to make the violation. I'm going to shut down the interface, right? So if anybody comes in, an intruder, I'm going to shut down the interface. Remember that? All right, so also what I'm going to do is, because remember when you plug in somebody, I don't want this to go through the listening and the learning state. 
I want it to go immediately to power up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say um, spanning tree in dash tree. Please make this port fast. Right? So that means anytime I plug it in, it's going to go immediately to from blocking to forwarding. So when he asks for a DHCP IP address, looking for a DHCP server, I'll be able, he doesn't have to wait for a long time to do that. And also want to make sure that this guy doesn't send BPDUs to indicate, hey, I'm a, I'm a root bridge. He's going to give, sends out information to tell the other switches that, you know, he was pretending to be a switch and he has a, a low, um, Number. So I'm going to tell the port, if you receive any bridge protocol data units from interface, don't allow it. So I'm going to do three. Okay. And uh, here, we can do question mark. Here we go to do BBT, B, BPDU guard. So I'm going to write the letter B, hit the tab key. And it's going to be enable, right? Just type enable. So now it's protected. All right. So there you go. It's, this is some basic, quick uh, switch security. That's from last course. I think it was chapter 10, if I'm not mistaken, module 10. All right. So um, what else do you need to know? All right. That's enough, right? So save this, and I will uh, end our configuration for point-to-point -point OSPF. All right. Hopefully, we'll be able to do a multicast access in class as a class activity, and you'll get familiar with uh, everything that you need to know about OSPF. So some of these commands will be repeated again in class. All right. And, of course, on the physical equipment as well. So, again, save this. Uh, and upload it, and I'll see you in the next chapter.